Hello, welcome to another video by Indicator Vault. My name is Ronald, and in this video, we're going to go over the pullback factor uh, by Indicator Vault uh, here on TradingView. And it is a, a two part thing. Uh, the, now, the main indicator is here this oscillator down in the bottom window. Uh, and on TradingView, it also does come with a thing on your main chart as well that can offer buy and sell signals as you can see here and obviously we can give uh, stop loss and take profit ideas as well so that's the two parts of it see another signal here that it gives uh, for now I'm just gonna hide that just to not uh, clutter up the chart at the moment and we'll just get right into it. So the pullback factor uh, is basically giving an idea, a visual of when a retracement is near its peak or near its end. You know, as we know, price does not just move in one, you know, just, you know, direction towards a specific price point. Um, it, it oscillates. It, you know. This is a big, strong push down here, but look, retracement up, another push down for a lower low, retracement up, another one here, retracement up, push lower low, then an even bigger retracement before continuing continuing up. So it, you know, it has its waves, its ebbs and flows. And so this is taking into account the current trend and the way this works is you see the 1.5 line here. Whenever we see the indicator going above the 1.5 line, as we see some of these peaks here, uh, that is going to signal us or alert us that that pullback that is currently in is, near, is at its peak, at its end, and that we should start seeing price continue its current trend very soon after. So, you know, there's a number of ways to uh, find the current trend. Obviously, trend lines is a big one, which I'll get into that example in a little bit. You know, but another one is, as you can see here, I've got some moving averages on the chart. And this is the 50 and the 100 EMAs. And just a simple way to gauge the trend is if the 50 is below the 100, you're looking at a downtrend. Then the other way around, as we see here, if the 50 is above the 100, you're looking at an uptrend. And so that's just one way to kind of gauge it as far as, you know, confirming certain biases or where you want to be, you know, buying and selling from. So quick example here, you know, we can see how the moving averages have crossed and obviously starts a big downtrend. Takes a moment for the indicator to get in sync with it. So as you can see, it goes above the line here and does have a retracement, but we are not necessarily you know, as confident in taking that trade. Obviously, this is uh, a trade that could be taken up, but we are looking for confirmations for the downtrend. So, see the oscillator is below here a while, and then finally pokes above it as it's touching. The, the MAs obviously goes above it and then falls hard. And so, we can see the pullback factor correctly identified that this retracement was not a change in the trend. It was just the pullback just to continue the overall trend again. And another example, you know, price or the MAs cross and then cross again, signifying that we should be looking for some more bearishness. We filter out this one because we're only looking for cells, right? 
So the move down as this is going above it would signify that we would see price move up for the uptrend. But we aren't paying attention to that at the moment. So look at this example. Downtrend. Prices come up here. Could easily just pull a fib there and look at the sensitivity to those levels. You know, first touch, uh, look at that. Three consecutive down days is matched with this going above the 1.5. So there's, I can guarantee you, there's a trade right there um, as it comes up. And if you go down, you know, we're on the four hour. If you go down to 15 or five minute, another great fib retracement to about here. And you could catch a three day sell off. No, it doesn't create a lower low yet on the four hour, but on the higher time frame, it's now signifying that, okay, we can expect a move, you know, down soon. So there could have been a trade taken in here. And obviously from the 61.8 moves back up though. Look at that. Never closes above the 75 and it's also matched. You, just, you know, so it moves down below the 1.5, comes back up over the 1.5 again. Another trade could have been taken here. Also matching uh, with the moving average. I would not, we can see the supply zone here, never gets touched. I personally would not have really anticipated it touching it here with the moving average acting as like a dynamic resistance to push price down. It would have really had to overreach in order to get this supply here. So we follow it down some more. Nothing's, you know, really signifying to us yet until here. So look at what we've got here. We can mark out this supply zone. One, just because this, the last up candle before this strong move down, I mean, that's what, five consecutive down days, breaks this low. So we have our eye on this zone here. So continuing the downtrend, the moving averages are, are above price with the 50 below the 100. Comes back up. Look at that. Right as it's going above the 1.5. So at the same time it's going the over, over the 1.5, it is hitting our supply zone. Not initially a move down, but another way you could take this is now this is now our new supply zone you could view this as with the pullback factor validating this supply zone as well so if the pullback factor is telling us okay this is the end of the retracement of the pullback we can see another move down uh, I would be looking for clearly defined zones and then obviously in this case uh, supply zone. So we can see the same thing comes up to it, taps it, strong move down creating taking out all of these lows here. Now this example is just in a downtrend. It works for uptrend as well. Let me go over to Another example here. As I zoom out to show this trend line here. Obviously we see it's gotten got broken, but three, four strong down moves playing off of this trend line. And look how they are all matched up. Moves down, comes up, it's getting in sync with the trend. Right here, 
we can see how it's poking above. And again, we're, you know, going with the trend. I know this trend line is not formed yet. I'm showing this is in hindsight, but the higher time frame is bearish. So we're not necessarily looking for the bullish pullbacks, right? We're looking for the trades we want to get in that will show the strong down moves. So, you know, so there's all these strong consecutive candles, this huge move down, this huge move down, you know, strong candles with gaps in them. And just from eyeballing it, looks like this would be a great fib level. Yeah, we can see never really closes above the 75 as it's also matching up with the pullback factor above 1.5. This next one is not lining up. We see we would filter out this pullback because we're bearish. See, this is, is a this would indicate a pullback for a bullish move, but we were only looking for bearishness, right? And also it doesn't really, if we look back here, it's not really lining up with any significant demand zones that would push price upwards. And just from eyeballing it, if we took the most recent range, maybe it would be a good fib level. Yeah, it would. But you see barely just any movement up. Not saying there couldn't be a trade taken from that, but you have to be very nimble, uh, very quick. You know, if you're buying and selling the same day, that can be very risky. I would personally not advise it. You pick your bias for a certain day and you stick with it. And you wait for these confirmations to line up. So I've got the other touch here from the trend line. Doesn't quite get to it, but look how long this has been in the over uh, 1.5 line. So at some point, we've got to, you know, believe there's going to be another strong down move very soon in the opposite direction, right? So as this whole thing is going up, with the pullback factor also going up above 1.5, at some point it's got to show a strong move down. So finally, the last touch with of the trend line matches up with this pullback here, pokes above the 1.5, then creates another low, big move down. So this is the pullback factor, you know, a great gauge and visual aid, uh, you know, to see, you know, okay, you know, when should price, you know, reverse from this area and continue in its current trend or at least offer some sort of, uh, you know, retracement or, or trade, you know, you could, you know, like this, uh, the example, the bullish example here, like, you know, even there's a buy here. You know, you can use those signals to ride this wave up. I'm not saying there can't be trades in here. You know, even just looking at it, this looks like a good fib retracement. And I'm sure if you went down to the five minute from the one hour, there's probably some demand zones in here. So you got to line these other confirmations up um, if you want to do that. Just for me personally, I would have waited for sales. You see the sell, this validates this supply zone to me with the pullback factor over the 1.5 and this strong move down. What does price do? Comes back up right into this supply, hits the trend line while the pullback factor is also one over 1.5. Another move down creating a lower low. So that's one way to use these confirmations, uh, you know, to trade with this indicator. So um, I hope this video was helpful and until next time, best of luck trading.